In a moment, we'll discuss the fallout from the Cardinal Theodore McCarrick scandal. Uh, I want to warn some of you parents. I know this is a family show, but if you have children, you may want to have them leave the room for this portion of the program. More troubling news this week in the church's handling of clerical sex abuse cases. Prosecutors in Chile announced on Monday that they have investigated 158 members of the country's church for allegedly committing or covering up sexual abuse against minors and adults. The investigations include reports of abuse by bishops, clerics, and lay workers made since 2000. In all, the number of purported victims is 266. At least 178 were minors. Santiago Cardinal Ricardo Ezati has already been summoned by prosecutors for his role in the alleged cover-up of abuse by his former chancellor. Ezati faced protests in his first public appearance celebrating Mass on Wednesday. He is among the Chilean bishops who offered their resignations en masse to Pope Francis earlier this year. The Holy Father has decided to keep Cardinal Ezati in office. Pope Francis has accepted the resignation of a Honduran bishop accused of misconduct with seminarians. Bishop Juan Jose Pineda Fascuele was a top lieutenant of papal advisor Cardinal Oscar Rodriguez Maradiaga. The Vatican did not offer any explanation for the resignation, although there had been long-standing rumors about the bishop's sexual misconduct. The Vatican only became aware of them during the course of investigating alleged financial irregularities in Cardinal, Cardinal Maradiaga's home diocese. According to the National Catholic Register, earlier this year, two seminarians submitted written testimony to a Vatican official accusing Pineda Fescuele of making unwanted sexual advances. Meanwhile, the chair of Pope Francis's commission on sexual abuse has admitted that he was sent a letter detailing the sexual misconduct of Cardinal Theodore McCarrick some three years ago. But Cardinal Sean O'Malley claims he did not personally receive the letter. He claims he passed the letter on to staff who determined that its content did not fall under the purview of the Vatican Commission or the Archdiocese of Boston. Cardinal O'Malley said that he is deeply troubled by recent revelations of Cardinal McCarrick's misbehavior. O'Malley has called for new policies to hold bishops accountable. The abuse scandal regarding Cardinal Theodore McCarrick continues to unfold in the press in shocking detail. A church panel determined that the accusations of sexual misconduct with a 16-year-old altar boy were credible. The Holy See removed McCarrick from public ministry, but now new accusations are emerging. One from a man who claims McCarrick sexually abused him starting at the age of 11, and another from a seminarian, confirming stories of misconduct with seminarians at a beach house. I've not seen Catholics this angry since 2002, and perhaps they have a right to be. This week, a civil and canon lawyer and a mother wrote an open letter to the U.S. Bishops' Conference in the Christian Review. Her name is Marjorie Murphy Campbell, and she joins me now. Marjorie, thanks for being here. Now tell Thank me, you. what about this story and the way you read it provoked you to write this open letter? We've been through this once with the bishops in 2002. Mm -hmm. And in 2002, the Conference of Bishops promised us an environment of safety. Mm -hmm. And they promised us that they had taken the steps necessary, canonically, locally, and nationally, mm -hmm. to make that environment of safety a reality. And they have failed us. Well, in 2002, I covered it. I remember that Dallas event when the Dallas Charter was created. Cardinal McCarrick was a member, a very influential one of that committee drafting the charter. Bishops were exempted, but the, the, the thinking at the time was the conference of bishops couldn't discipline bishops. That was a prerogative of the Holy See. There may be canonically reasons for exempting the bishops, uh, but that has nothing to do with the promise of safety that was made mm -hmm. to the communal body. And if they exempted themselves strictly for canonical reasons, then they promised us there was some mechanism in place to prevent being exactly where we are right this minute. Yeah, and we're going to get into your remedies. You offered a few at the end of your open letter, and we'll get to that. I want to go back to Cardinal McCarrick for a moment. 
uh, in the early 2000s, there was a delegation of Catholics that went to Rome to warn them about the rumors they had heard and things they knew, particularly about his preying on seminarians at that beach house, etc. What happened there? The man was allowed to, to proceed in a very uh, quick pace up the hierarchical chain of command and became one of the most influential cardinals in the world. How did that happen? Well, first of all, we don't know what was told to the Vatican, and we don't know uh, what the content was and how it was treated. But second of all, the Vatican is very far away. The United States Conference of Bishops, Catholic bishops, is sitting right here in our country. Mm -hmm. They sat with each other through the drafting, the discussion, and the implementation of that charter. Yeah. And if they knew that they were sitting with predators in the room while promising safety to our children and our young people, I, I'm not particularly interested in hearing what was told to Rome. Hmm. Well, but it, but it bears repeating. Now you have a father, Desmond Rossi, who's coming out, an Albany priest, who was a Newark priest, who in 2003 brought accusations against Cardinal McCarrick. So a year after the charter, he's already a cardinal. Accusations come forward. Not only were they deemed credible, a settlement was proffered. W why wasn't anything done? And following that, we learn that his protégés, he becomes a kingmaker, and his protégés are now going on to higher careers, and they become bishops. Why didn't somebody stop and say, wait a minute, we've got paper on this guy. What about these settlements? This is an excellent question. Why didn't somebody in the U.S. Conference of Bishops stand up and say, wait a minute, we have a problem mm -hmm. that is much bigger than just our priests. We have a problem at the Episcopal level. Mm -hmm. And if something was said to Rome and there was non-responsiveness from Rome, then all the more reason why our bishops should have taken the matter into their hands within the community that is created by the Episcopal Conference. Mm. They meet, they discuss, they talk formally, they talk mm -hmm. informally, and this is information that was here and available. I want to play a bite from you. This is from Cardinal Kevin Farrell. He is the head of the Vatican's Office of Laity, Life, and Family. He was also a very close collaborator with Cardinal McCarrick, his chancellor here in D.C., mm -hmm. and his roommate. He lived in the same house with him for six years. Watch this. The only thing I can tell you about McCarrick is I was shocked, overwhelmed. I never heard of any of this before when the six years I was there with him. Um, I didn't know Cardinal McCarrick prior to his coming to Washington, D.C. I was a priest of Washington, D.C. Uh, I worked in the Chancery in Washington um, and never, no indication, none whatsoever. Nobody ever talked to me about that. Your reaction to that? Not credible. Not credible. Why do you say that? Based on all of the reports and all of the rumor mill, and by reports I mean mainstream media reports mm -hmm. that are now professional journalists who are following their standards to report what was known about Cardinal McCarrick and Cardinal McCarrick's behavior with our young seminarians and our young priests. Mm -hmm. That combined with a Catholic rumor mill that many of us are familiar with and know that these rumors and this information has been circulating for a number of years. Mm. So it is not credible. Yeah, that, that, this, these rumors, I have to say, before Cardinal McCarrick, when he was still in Newark, I had heard these stories from seminarians who made these accusations. But as Rod Dreher and Julia Dewan and others who were approached by people, no one would go on the record. So you can't report something if you don't have a name attached to it. But apparently settlements had already been paid out when we were hearing these rumors. But it was everywhere. I, I, it, it does seem odd that people that close to the cardinal himself 
wouldn't have known anything about it. I want to read you the top of a statement from Cardinal Sean O'Malley. Cardinal O'Malley is head of, of course, as we mentioned earlier, the uh, commission the Pope has empowered to uh, root out sexual predation on, on young people, to protect young people, and any sexual predation in the church. He said, for the past several days, articles in the national media have reported accusations of Cardinal Theodore McCarrick's sexual improprieties with several adults and his criminal violations of the sexual abuse of minors. These alleged actions, when committed by any person, are morally unacceptable and incompatible with the role of a priest, bishop, or cardinal. Your reaction to that? Raymond, who calls the fondling, groping, and sex with young seminarians and young priests consensual sex between adults? Who mm -hmm. calls that consensual sex? Who calls mm -hmm. it improprieties between adults? Mm -hmm. These are our sons. Mm -hmm. These are the young men in formation who we've encouraged to go to seminary, who we as mothers and, and family members have, have encouraged our sons, raised our sons in the church and encouraged them towards the priesthood. Mm -hmm. To call it improprieties between adults instead of predation mm -hmm. by a person in trust and authority mm -hmm. is the work of PR and it's the work of attorneys. And it sounds to me like when I read this statement and other statements are coming out that the bishops are going to try again to hide behind PR firms and lawyers mm -hmm. and treat this as a canonical problem when it's not. It is a crisis in the Episcopacy of this church. Okay, let's get to some of your solutions, which you mentioned at the end of your open letter. And uh, you write, with this shameful exposure of Cardinal McCarrick's history, the USCCB enters a new ominous chapter. The bishops must confront serious questions about the role and credibility of the conference itself. I urge toward Disclosure, transparency, and communication. I urge you to commission a third study with a focus on how a sexually abusive priest not only remained immune from the scrutiny that our priests underwent during the sexual abuse crisis, but advanced in his episcopacy. Now, you mentioned this would be the third study because they already did the causes and context in the John Jay study. Why do you need another study? We need an internal factual audit of which bishops knew what mm -hmm. and why a causal study first you get the facts mm -hmm. who knew what right and then you from those facts you analyze why no one spoke up and why the factual information that was known in the room was excluded from the discussion and the solution mm -hmm. Let's go on. You mentioned this also, and uh, other Father Thomas Berg and others have suggested this as well. I also urge the USCCB to promptly appoint a commission of laity to work with the USCCB on initiating this investigation and to formulate independent observations and recommendations regarding procedures for exposing, reporting, and addressing sexual misconduct by our bishops. Marjorie, why do you think an effort like this would work when the National Review Board, which was established to do largely the same thing, kind of petered out and you had mass defections? Uh, uh, Governor Keating, uh, um, uh, uh, Bob Bennett, many others, credible people who were very engaged at the beginning, ran into brick walls and said, you know what? Our hands are, we, we, don't have, we don't have discovery nor enforcement powers. How would this effort be different? Well, that, that's exactly the point. This commission can't be urged to dig a trench with handcuffs on. Mm. This has to be a commission that is given complete and full access to the records of the USCCB and that every bishop is, in, is obligated to cooperate with. There has to be, this has to be a laity-led solution. The credibility at the Episcopal level is shot. This seems to be an international crisis. I don't think it's just, a lot of people are trying to write it off on Cardinal McCarrick, 88 years old. Uh, I've spoken to people in Rome who say he'll never stand trial a day in his life in a canonical trial. They're waiting for him indeed to expire so that he doesn't have to There has that. been a pattern of that, mm -hmm. but uh, internationally there are now some cases that the speculation is they can't wait 
for these bishops to pass away. Mm -hmm. And at any rate, no matter what the Vatican, what the response of the Vatican is, mm -hmm. the laity in the United States are demanding that we be given access and control over the solution to this. Should Cardinal McCarrick be laicized and stripped of his cardinalatial title? I think so. I think any of the bishops who know that they participated in concealing this information, mm -hmm. I believe they should resign. I believe there should be a period of reflection, resignation, and repentance. Well, we saw that we saw that in the uh, in the Chile situation, where they all proffered their resignation. The Pope accepted some of them. I, I wonder if that day of reckoning has not come. You know what I was thinking as we were talking before the before the segment. What we saw in the Honduran situation, which we reported earlier in in uh, Rodriguez Maradiaga's uh, diocese, there was financial impropriety, and the investigation into the financial impropriety led to the sexual misconduct. I almost think you need a two-tier investigation, a serious, cold and clinical financial forensic audit in addition to a church-led moral and sexual uh, uh, analysis of some type in tandem. It's the only way you're going to get to the root causes of this because inevitably the money and the deviancy goes hand in hand. I think that's a great suggestion, Raymond. Any, anything else you would recommend to the bishops? That and they, the laity. Uh, there are people looking in. I know they are heartbroken watching this. But I, I got to tell you, look, when Mother Angelica asked me to take this position, I knew there would be rough moments like this. When this thing broke in 2001 and 2002, we covered it. We were honest about it. Some people hated that I mentioned it. But if you're not going to be clean and transparent about what's happening, you're never going to clean it up and get to the roots of it, I think. I, I'm in total agreement, Raymond, and the response that I've gotten from my letter, mm -hmm. several people have contacted me and said they've signed the letter and sent it to their bishop. And it, the, what, what has got to happen here, and I agree with you that the lay commission needs to have broad scope of authority mm -hmm. so that if there is financial implications to this and financial dimensions to this, that they can go there. Mm -hmm. But I, there are two things I'd say. First of all, I'd say to the bishops, please reflect before you take us through this trench again mm -hmm. and an even deeper, more um, worrisome, evil trench, mm -hmm. I can't imagine. Please reflect. And if you knew and you did nothing, please consider how to serve your flock maybe resignation and repentance is the right thing to do to save us from going through this. Mm. And second, I would say we are the communal body. We are Jesus's people. And w don't leave the church. Go to mass, say rosaries, mm -hmm. hold yeah, the- Yeah, the church is bigger than these scandals. That's exactly and, and right. And the church has been scandalized and, and, and dealt with this for, for centuries, a lot worse. Um, but this is a pretty dark period. This it, is ugly. And it, because of the media, it's, it's metastasized and it's enlarged. Um, and it scares a lot of people, frankly. It is scary. And it is metastasizing. I was, in, I was on a phone call and there was an Uber driver who said, thank you for doing this, mm. overhearing my phone conversation. Mm. So we need to stay with the church. We need to hold our bishops accountable and responsible. Marjorie Murphy Campbell, thank you for being thank here. Thank you. And you can read Marjorie's open letter at thechristianreview.com.